Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this week's message, whether you're watching this as it's premiering or later on. We are truly grateful and honored and blessed that you are watching this today. So welcome from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for watching. We hope this is a blessing to you. Sometimes when you're going through a rough season, it can feel like it's never going to end. We can't see ahead of us. We don't know the future. But if things have been bad, it's easy to assume that things are just going to continue that way. We don't know the end of our story. And if we're walking through some big challenges, it can start to feel pretty hopeless. And that's where the nation of Israel was at. Last week, we talked about the book of Judges, and that was a very dark and terrible time in the history of Israel. And the people could have felt like, this is, this is just the way things are going to be for us. This is just the way the, his, like, the story of Israel is going to be. All right? But the amazing truth is, they weren't at the end of their story. Better days were ahead. It didn't feel like it because they were in the midst of some dark times. But better days were ahead. And that's not just true of them. That's true of us. And that's the message that I have for you today. This sermon is called, You're Not at the End. You're not at the end. We're looking at Ruth chapter 1, verses 19 to 22. I'm going to show you in the scriptures this powerful truth that can be so hard to see when you're in the middle of your story. And things can feel discouraging and hopeless. Maybe not even for your own life. Maybe for the life of somebody else. Maybe someone you love and care about. You might just feel like, there's that's just always that's always going to be a struggle or that's that, that, they're always going to be walking through that no you're not at the end that's the message today let's pray i'm going to give some background and we're going to look at the text and we're going to believe god for this thank you lord that we get to spend this time in your word we believe and trust in the power of your word and in the truth that's in there. And Lord, I pray that you would give me the words to speak and that, and that I would communicate your heart faithfully. I want to honor you. And Lord, I pray that we would believe this truth in your word. That we would receive encouragement today and that our faith would be boosted today looking at your word in jesus name amen i am so happy that you're with us today this is great want to give a little bit of background there was a family in the town of bethlehem the husband's name was elimelech his wife was naomi they had two sons malon and chilion there was a famine in bethlehem so they had to leave they went to moab so that they can wait out this famine. But something awful happened. Elimelech died. So Naomi just has her two sons. Now her two sons get married, which is awesome. They marry two Moabite women, Ruth and Orpah. But then tragedy hits again. And Malon and Chilion die. So Naomi's like, I've lost everything. I just have these daughters-in-law that I love, but I don't want them to be stuck with me and their lives be ruined. And so she talks to them and pleads with them and says, go back to your families. And Orpah weeps and cries and goes back to her family. But Ruth, she stays with Naomi and she promises Naomi that nothing but death would separate them and that she was going with her. And so they go back. And that's where the story picks up. So let's look at the text. Ruth chapter 1 verses 19 to 22. All right. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. 
And the women said, Is this Naomi? But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. All right, so let's unpack this. In verse 19, they return. And the city is so excited, okay? She has friends in the city, and all these people are excited to see her. And they're like, is this Naomi? Like, whoa, Naomi is here. But we see what has happened to Naomi's heart, where her mind is at, after everything that's happened. Because she says, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Now, Naomi meant pleasant. Mara means bitter. She's like, don't call me pleasant. Call me bitter, because the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. Call me, call me bitter. Her heart is hurt. Her heart is so hurt. And you need to understand that when people are walking through really challenging times, they might say some things that aren't real good or aren't theologically correct and that's the time to love them and show empathy okay not you know be obnoxious and try to correct everything that they say okay so hopefully her friends were had empathy and understood that she was going through a grieving process okay but in verse 21 she explains why she says that and she's explaining her circumstances she's like we we left full but we came back empty the Lord has testified against me. The Almighty has afflicted me. She's questioning the goodness of the Lord and the goodness of the Lord specifically to her. This sounds like somebody who feels forsaken, someone who feels like they're stuck in something really terrible. And this pain is immeasurable. Losing a husband, her husband Elimelech, losing her sons, Malon and Chilion, terrible terrible it's so sad it's as if she really does believe this is the end of her story this is the way things are going to be i'm going to come back to my hometown and my story's done ruth has come with me my family line is over we find out later they have some land we will never get that land back that land won't be redeemed it's as if she feels like it's over, like God has forsaken them. Like God has forsaken his kindness. But there's a glimmer of hope. It's found in verse 22, and it's easy to miss. It mentions that they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Now, that might not mean a whole lot to us, but you need to understand just how powerful harvest is. Harvest is this symbol of blessing. It's this symbol of being able to gather what God has grown. It's God providing for people. It's something refreshing and amazing. It's God tending to us. It's incredible. And they came during barley harvest. It's so cool. So she goes to a field to gather, and she goes to Boaz's field. Interesting. Now, Boaz takes an interest in her and makes sure that she's taken care of. He shows her some favor, and when she comes back to Naomi, she comes back with an ephah of barley, which might not mean a whole lot to us, unless if you know what an ephah is. If you don't know an ephah, an ephah is 10 omers. Still doesn't mean anything to you? Okay. <laughs> an omer is three and a half pounds, approximately. So if an omer is three and a half pounds, that means an ephah is about 35 pounds. She brought 35 pounds of barley back from the field. 
and Naomi is just her mind is blown. Okay, her mind is absolutely blown. She realizes that the Lord is showing favor, and she finds out it's through this person, Boaz, who's actually a relative. Wow, amazing! And then she makes this confession in Ruth two twenty. That is so profound. After she sees this shift, all of a sudden she has some hope. She's beginning to realize that she is not at the end of her story. And she's gone through terrible things, but she's not at the end. And this is the confession that she makes in Ruth 2.20. She says, Blessed be the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. Blessed be the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness. Now remember, she was talking as if God had forsaken his kindness earlier. There looked like there was no hope. She was in this really dark time in her story. And she felt as if that was the end, but it wasn't. They arrived at Barley Harvest, and there's this man, Boaz, and God showed them favor. And God has not forsaken his kindness. You need to understand God has not forsaken his kindness in your life. He has not forsaken his kindness. And people who, are you, who you are praying for, who, are, who you are brokenhearted for, the Lord has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. I'm pretty sure that includes everybody, right? He has not forsaken his kindness. And what happens? Well, Boaz ends up redeeming the land for the family and marrying Ruth. And they have a baby, Obed. And the people absolutely rejoice. And what's neat is they see just how precious it is to Naomi too. And they're like, a child has been given to Naomi. And they are just so floored and amazed at God's goodness. You see, she had no idea that God was bringing a huge shift, a huge change. She assumed she was at the end, that it was all over, that her story would be a tragic one, and God turned it around. Now, here's what's interesting. This turned... Naomi's life around. Naomi thought that she was at the end. This, These events in the book of Ruth, this shift that happens once she comes to Bethlehem at barley harvest, this shift that happens changes her story. Now watch this. It changes the story of Israel. Israel had been in the dark time of the judges. It looked like it would last forever. This happens... Obed is the father of Jesse. Jesse is the father of David, who is the greatest king in the history of Israel. He brings the whole nation together as it never truly had been together before. He was the king after God's heart, putting that dark past during the time of the judges far away from them. And then, not only that, but the dark time that humanity waited for a savior. And this big shift, Obed is born. Obed is the father of Jesse. Jesse is the father of David. And Jesus is called the son of David. And Ruth herself is in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. This is a shift, not just in Naomi's life, not just in the nation of his, Israel's history, but in the history of humanity. And it declares this amazing truth. As long as you have a pulse going, and as long as the Lord tarries in coming back, you are not at the end. And no matter how cruddy it is, no matter how awful it is, you are not at the end. And you can and should and must believe that the Lord will not 
forsake his kindness to the living and the dead. Ruth 2.20 God will not forsake his kindness to the living and to the dead. You are not at the end. We can get into a place of despair if we feel stuck, like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But there is. We are all just, anytime you go through a terrible thing, you are just one barley harvest away from a huge shift that can happen. Because God will not forsake his kindness to the living and to the dead. I hope and pray that you believe those words. Maybe for you right now, you need to hear these words. Maybe you've been praying for someone and in the middle of things, it might you might feel like, I just want to give up. I feel like my prayers aren't being answered. I feel like things are always going to be the way that they are. You're not at the end. The story's not over. If you've got a pulse and Jesus has not come back yet, guess what? You're not at the end. And God has not forsaken his kindness. Maybe you need this truth later on and you go through something really terrible in the future. Maybe I'm going to rewatch this after I go through something terrible and I will have to remind myself that I am not at the end. Please understand that the Lord has not forsaken his kindness. Ruth 2.20 Naomi, her life turned around. Israel's life turned around. Humanity's existence saw a shift here. Oh, Obed, the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David. You're not at the end. You are not at the end of the story. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. I want you to believe that so much. I want you to believe that. Believe it for someone else. Believe it for yourself, too. I need you to believe that. God has not forsaken his kindness. And with everything going on right now in our world, and all the uncertainty, be certain of this. You're not at the end. And God has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. Be at peace and trust and know that God is there. And he has not forsaken his kindness. We're all one barley harvest away, and you're not at the end. Thank you, God, for your word. Help us to believe and to know and to be certain of your goodness and to be certain that a shift can happen. And even if it doesn't happen here on earth, we know what awaits us in eternity and that whatever we might be stuck in, whatever rough patch we might find ourselves in, Lord, you can pull us out. And there are better days ahead. We're not at the end. Thank you, God. Thank you for your word. We love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us. I hope it was an encouragement to you. We appreciate you watching this. If you have prayer requests, please reach out to us. You can comment below. You can email us. We pray blessings over you and your family, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.